well, thank you for your time. I think that's uh, great. So as, as you can see, we had a, uh, what we can say, connectivity integration issue, which is great because it's exactly what we will talk about, how a company can really face the integration issue by uh, connecting and managing their data source together. So my name is David uh, Talagas. I'm in charge of uh, product marketing for data quality and uh, data governance at Talent. Uh, so let's start maybe on explaining uh, first who is Talent because I'm sure that some of, of you don't really know who is Talent. So Talent is now a thousand employees, uh, recognized as a leader over the last years by Gartner. We'll explain it a little bit later. And um, with a really good, fo strong focus right now on the cloud. Um, and we also have strong footprints. And the topics to do today is to explain to you exactly what we have done with. Uh, some actors in this market in the ph digital farming industry. Um, wh when talent, we well, really start talents, uh, we really start with integrations. And that was the key things. So back uh, 10 years ago, 20, 20 years ago now. And then we had data quality and we complete our approach uh, with uh, big data. And also we were the first platforms to, be, uh, to have native data quality in uh, big data platforms and streaming platform as well. And then we came with the idea of unified platforms, and, and now we are developing uh, persona-based apps to democratize that access to a lot of people in, uh, in, in a company. Um, recognized as a leader, uh, I think it's the first one is probably interesting because it's a big data forester, but the two others as well. Not sure if you see everything on, uh, on the screen. So we are, uh, we are on the leader uh, quadrant uh, for data quality and data integrations. Um, but being a leader, providing innovative technology sometimes is not enough. And the reality is that lots of companies don't really get it, are, are still not ready. And our challenge at Talent is really to uh, help them to, do, to, to scale uh, their data transformations. 60% of them uh, are still behind in, in digital transformation. That's a study that comes from Forrester. Uh, Harvard Business Review tells us that globally, 47% of companies still have data issues data integrity issues, they cannot really connect data source together. And mostly, uh, more than half of the data which is in the company data is not accessible. Uh, so transformational promise uh, remain totally elusive for many. And the, the role of talent is really to um, um, connect the dots between the source and storage from one side, and analytics and apps through API on the other side, uh, by really making sure that you can um, deliver trusted data, uh, inside the data data, transforming the data from a raw uh, state to a trusted state uh, where the data can be uh, um, insightful enough to be used for analytics, to be trusted in apps, and so on. I saw this morning that there was a, a kind of um, United Nations effort to, uh, to help sustainable development to, uh, to, to use better data, uh, this is an idea where we are part of this challenge. It's not about sustainable development, but sustainable food productions. And the idea here is uh, with the farming, so how can you deliver inside ready data at scale? So mapping uh, our visions directly into the digital farming area. And I will start by um, explaining uh, what are the challenges that um, our customers and also players are, are living you know, when we are talking about farming and agriculture. The first uh, figures is about agri agricultural land. It shows that now, based on global land area worldwide, we are just 35%. It was a little bit bigger uh, previously, 45%. Now it's far less due to, of course, uh, urbanizations and modernization of, of our societies. Um, at the same time, uh, two very interesting figures. The rural populations, uh, which is a percentage of total populations, which decreased by more than 10%. Uh, from the 60s to uh, 2080s. And you could have tell me, okay, that's okay, but it's just 10%. But the fact is that uh, it's 10%, it's 46% it's, uh, of the total population, but this global population has really changed uh, by being more than multiplied by two and a half in more than uh, 50 years. Um, which really put a challenge for uh, talent customers, for the partners who are working in the digital farming industry, which is, how can we do more with less? But to be honest, nobody has weighted talents on other kind of player to do that. So if you look at how uh, farming is evolving over the last 50 years, it's totally tremendous. 
So they, uh, this is a picture of a tractor from the 60s, and this is a picture from the uh, New Holland uh, tractor from 2018. So this is a completely different model. Uh, on, on, the, on, the right, on the right side, right? On the right side, the harvesters, uh, one farmer in the US with such model can feed uh, more than 150 people. So it's huge and the, the food production has, has jumped by more than 60%. The question is, is it enough to feed the global populations? The variety is you still need to do more with less. And uh, coming back to these pictures of the harvesters, so this is the interior of a New Holland harvester. Um, you will see uh, it's not a tractor that we have in mind in terms of, of metaphor. Uh, there are a lot of connectors, a lot of sensors. Uh, the, the tractor also, the, the harvester has built-in uh, machine learning capabilities to, uh, on, on, to based on uh, farmer input, to anticipate the next passage in, in the fields and really to uh, optimize uh, the adjustment and the yields uh, for the farmer. So it's really impressive the way uh, it's built in with sensors and connectors. Um, but not only, so if you should go a little bit deeper, you will see that you have also IoTs, uh, sensors in the equipments. So it's good because it reduces, um, it improves uh, productivities. And uh, this is an example of how productivities and uh, capabilities of sensors can really change the productivity uh, model of a, of a farm. Um, but it's not only uh, in the tractors or in the harvesters. Uh, you, also, you also have drones. There are lots of uh, news about small companies that are starting to build their own adventures uh, around drones. Um, drones can be used for crop monitoring uh, at a very moderate cost. Uh, but also it helps to really visualize crops and, and combat droughts and other environmental factors like weeds or, uh, or making sure that they can spot uh, the, right way, the right part of the fields, the right parcels uh, to make it uh, to, to canalize and focus uh, some, some pesticide actions uh, somewhere in the fields. Um, they can also use 3D imaging as well. The uh, thing is also 3D imaging is very uh, consuming, uh, data consuming as well. So, uh, but that's not enough. So this is uh, some pictures that come from uh, Bosch. It's not one of our customers, but it's still a good example. Uh, they are using what they call smart praying systems. Uh, so what smart praying system is about is really to use um, a camera sensors to distinguish uh, weeds uh, from crops and making sure that uh, they can uh, really focus the use of herbicides locally in the field. So the idea is uh, not to use herbicides, the idea is to use the less uh, possible herbicides in the, in the field. And that's currently the challenge that uh, all industries is right now facing. Um, and these challenges, uh, I mean, you, we, are, we see connectors, we see IoT, sensors, tractors, everything built in, and it's, it's, it's still not there. And you will have lots of, uh, of, of farmers that would like to connect to use more and more data. I mean, if you are in a farm, you want to make sure that you have uh, satellite, in, satellite information, but you also want to make sure that you have your uh, field information or uh, um, crop monitoring information from the drones. So everything is coming together, and, and data will not stop there, so data source will not stop there, and there will be new challenges about what, what will come next in terms of, uh, of data. And, of course, the capabilities of embracing everything is, is limited. You will not have the capabilities to embrace everything at, at the same cost. So it's a challenge for the farmer, uh, who is not literating us to use sometimes all the uh, capabilities of the data that he, he, he needs to use. It's a challenge for the digital societies, uh, farming societies, that need to get bigger and bigger data. And it's a challenge for us to make sure that we provide deeper and, and uh, better integrations. And as it was not in us, farmers are really suffering from climate change. So the, the capacity to predict is really, really critical for them, uh, probably b worse than it was uh, a few years ago. And then it, 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 it created some challenges. First, uh, a collaboration, I would say, um, a, a data democratization challenges for them. Uh, at one time, you had just one farmer using his fields. Now, it's, uh, you can connect different farms together. You can, based on the region where, where you are um, uh, working, you can really connect some farms together to, to share some predictive uh, 
um, field productivity uh, models. Um, there are some data that we know, but there are a lot of data that we don't know yet. Some new source coming from new objects, from uh, IoT, from new source, from new satellites uh, that will come, and, and, and so that you will need to manage your own. Climate change, uh, make sure that, okay, now it's, uh, it's a big change because uh, it's, not in, it's not enough to, to proceed with batch processing. Now you need to have wind flight um, data processing. And real time is really uh, critical uh, for them to make sure that they can react quickly. And it's, it's totally uh, fantastic the amount of progress that they've done over the last years. Fortunately, something has changed. It's about digital farming. So what digital farming is about is really the combinations of uh, precision farming, so what we have seen directly into the previous slides, uh, but also farm management software. So I will start, to start introducing that in my next slide. And also the, um, the unique capabilities of an integration player like Talent, who can really bring uh, some data, cap data ingestion capabilities to make sure that this one will be used by the, uh, by the farmers. And, and this is a promising uh, market size. for This is one, one picture, one slide from one of our partners. Uh, who's really using it to, make, to explain that the challenges that they are facing. And so uh, I, I said, okay, let, let's jump into our use case there. And this is all around profitable farming. And uh, it, 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 people are not anymore talking about specifically uh, um, digital farming. They are talking about profitable farming. Uh, by that, they mean that the, the value is not into... Um, the connectors, the value into the pooling of information, and how you can make sure that you trust these information together. So that's the challenge that they're facing. And one of them uh, that we will talk about is a company called SMAG, um, who uh, were goals uh, from SMAG was to optimize the wheat productions with the big data uh, predictive modeling. So what is SMAG? SMAG is one um, partner of Stellum. Uh, it's a 200 people companies, uh, more than 10 million euros. Uh, they are, let's say, the digital backbone for uh, farming cooperatives in France, and so, and specifically in the wheat productions. And so they are, have a unique combination of both um, IT expertise, are delivering lots of uh, innovative solutions over the last uh, 15 years, and also from farming expertise, because they also work on agronomic studies. So they have a unique combination of uh, agronomic knowledge and at the same time, IT expertise. And uh, SMAG had a, 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 a try to consolidate uh, what we have seen before, uh, weather data. Uh, how can we integrate daily data from um, uh, models, like from source like weather news, weather measures, agricast, but also map it with uh, what we call in C code. In C code is, um, um, is like tons and brackets codes where you can uh, map uh, location of a satellite regions together with a company code. Uh, so that's one of the challenges that, that, that they were facing. So they had huge data stream on that. But they also had, and they captured information on plots, on parcels, like varietal information, uh, planting dates, uh, but also uh, soil types. And that kind of information can be huge. And at the same time, uh, using satellite imagery, uh, we can be huge because it's not only uh, Take a pictures like in Google Maps, it's taking pictures uh, every day, every hour on, a, on the same region. So it's, it, it, it's, it's a tremendous amount of volumes. Um, globally, they are supporting weather system for more than 36,000 uh, communes or villages, towns, municipalities in France. Um, and it's roughly around 10,000 satellite images per year. And with 1 million of data per hectare, uh, and they are managing with squids, uh, wheats, sorry, uh, 225 million of hectares uh, in France. So it's huge, they are covering the wheat production in France and they really want to make sure that they provide predictive models so that farmers can really uh, be equipped with the right solutions on that. So what they did, uh, they used uh, uh, Talent as um, uh, the real-time big data solution from Talent uh, on an Hadoop uh, data lake and uh, to um, create a model which is called Data Crop, which is, uh, I would say, digital farming platforms, uh, which can help, help us to track the progress 
of the crop over the year, but also to, uh, of course, to predict its yield. So uh, right now, uh, I think this figure is very interesting. It's 80% of French agriculture plots um, are managed by, by this model. So it, it's huge. They provide that this model is working, and they provide it, and they make sure that it's working based on also uh, uh, talent. Why they use talents uh, here? Um, the combination of algorithmic processing and data integrations together, uh, to they train their models using uh, machine learning capabilities of talent. Uh, they're using the big data uh, capabilities of, of talent, but also um, they, we provide them with the capability to transform agronomic data very quickly. Uh, I, I put this uh, picture here. It's 10,000 high-definition image, so it's one crop year. They integrated that in a very short amount of time directly into, uh, in, into the model with talent. And what's, what they also liked about is uh, the orchestrations. The fact that they were not using like, uh, uh, only encoding tools, but also unique platforms uh, to ease up the integration between, uh, uh, between teams together, so between what the developers were doing and what the data scientists uh, were doing at the same time. Uh, second use case that I will talk about is a uh, buyer. Uh, so um, you are probably uh, uh, familiar with Bayer. Uh, Bayer has a team uh, which in, in what we were calling uh, digital farming as well. They have a whole uh, department around digital farming. And what they are doing with digital farming is that they are developing different kind of apps. They have built-in apps factories. Uh, just to spot the right needs of uh, farmers and make sure that um, they are equip them with the right tools, uh, very easy uh, apps, so that they can really uh, they don't have they don't need to have some specific data knowledge to use them, and making sure that uh, the farmers can really feel comfortable using this uh, this data and capture this data together on, on different kind of uh, of subjects, of scenarios. So here the 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 scenario where we helped is around the uh, weeds. Uh, so weeds are really for the bains of uh, farming uh, for different kinds of reasons. Um, they are weeds that displace native species, uh, but also they compete with native plants. So uh, it minimizes the farmer's productivity quite heavily, and it prevents them to, to, to be steady and to be sustainable over the long period of time. So the question was to say, okay, how can we help the farmers uh, to, uh, about these problems? How to accurately identify uh, the weeds in their fields? There are different kinds of natures of weeds. So how can you spot the right one from the bad one? Um, so that you can spot the right herbicide on the right uh, weeds and avoid uh, doing, uh, I mean, massive uh, herbicide uh, um, pollution in the fields. And also, the other question was about the real times, so how to know in seconds which weed is growing in your fields. And at the end, uh, that's why we mentioned profitable farming. It's about minimize risk uh, for improving profitability here. And they came up with an idea of um, an app, uh, which they call Weed Scoot. Uh, which help us to, um, uh, to identify very quickly um, how to uh, spot the right weeds uh, using these apps. So weed scoot has been uh, used to, uh, to, to equip the farmers, uh, making sure that they can capture uh, the data directly in the fields, and, uh, and so that the, the machine learning models uh, will, will enable them to identify it, uh, the weed and say, okay, it's, uh, you have to uh, use RBC on these ones and not on the other ones. Um, so there, and there are plenty of apps like this one. So we are, at Talent, we are not building apps, but we are building all the, uh, the, the data technology behind it. Um, this app was quite popular because it registered more than 250,000 downloads uh, directly into, uh, uh, into the farmers, uh, specifically in Germany. And what they are doing is that they are applying um, AI technologies uh, to identify the weeds and um, making sure that it will change uh, the way uh, it, it was uh, farmers uh, manage their herbicides on, on their fields. So for that, they are using also big data solutions, but on a different, uh, they are using uh, AWS um, uh, solutions uh, on the private cloud, and so that they can handle the source, uh, the data source differently in real times, 
and mostly right now more than uh, 70 varieties of weed have been identified and it's more than 100,000 of photo which has been uploaded. You could say this app is not that the app that we are using uh, on a daily basis. But this is very functional, this is very productive, and it's working. And it helps uh, the farmers to really uh, uh, improve their productivity so that we can consider that they like it. They were using Talent before, and the fact that as, but not the big data solution, but at the same platforms, it was very easy uh, for them to ramp up uh, because they had the right tools and it was easy also to um, to ramp up with new teams in their in their teams because because of the um, of the easy uh, easiness of the uh, of the solution that they, they were using based on the knowledge and expertise that they had internally as well so it's also about ingestion it's also about uh, about time and um, i think that this one is very uh, interesting because it showed that um, um, some concrete example of how you can combine uh, the power of the big data solutions together with a digital, with a company uh, that has different digital farming expertise. And the very interesting thing about Bayer is that at the region, Bayer is not a digital company. Um, but they introduced, they had a digital farming department. And we have, we're seeing uh, more and more uh, companies developing digital services digital departments that we need to capture um, uh, the incredible amount of data that is producing by, uh, by their ecosystem, by their apps, by their clients, and together with, uh, with uh, talent solutions. S summary uh, on that, but uh, I will have more, a little bit more slides to talk about, but um, um, the value here is, is really about how you connect and uh, by collecting the, the, the different sources uh, from the raw data, whatever it's uh, tractors, whatever it's satellite imagery, as we have seen in SMAG, uh, whatever it's the drones also, uh, whatever it's the sensor that you have in the fields, or also between uh, farms together, because farms are also connected. They need to make sure that uh, they are um, working on the same, uh, they're working on the same ground, and they are sharing their expertise uh, locally, so uh, sometimes they need to, uh, you need to, to share expertise together. Um, and also connecting with analytics for sure, uh, analytics that can be used in different apps, in different services that can be provided by uh, not only by companies like uh, SMAG, but also by by, uh, by producers within uh, f um, within Bayer here. So as a, I would say, uh, um, uh, to to help uh, distributing more efficiently. Uh, uh, RBC for, for farmers, but um, look at the Holland model that I presented before. So the Holland models, and uh, I can also uh, uh, quote the example of uh, John Deere, um, they also provide additional digital, digital services to farmers. So um, they really transform themselves uh, by not only providing manufacturing equipment, farming equipment uh, to farmers worldwide, but they are providing more and more uh, digital services. So John Deere is providing uh, remote support. Uh, you can also um, see, uh, for, uh, even if you are not on your on your field, you can see some monitoring activity from the harvester, harvesters that are in your field. So you can manage remotely uh, some data coming from different harvesters. So it's it's quite powerful the way uh, manufacturing companies change uh, the way they embrace uh, digital technologies and data, so that they can provide added value to uh, to customers. Um, but of course, we are not only about digital farming. So at Talent, we have uh, different examples uh, in financial services, uh, but also in life sciences. Uh, I recently had uh, uh, we had a, a Talent uh, user conference where we talk around uh, AstraZeneca, but also with uh, in the energy in the distribution distribution uh, energy, we had uh, lots of examples that are I would say on the same kind of logic. So they are producing lots of data, but they don't know how to connect them together. Or if they don't know, they don't have the right time, or the right budget to, to, to monetize this data together. And the value is around data monetization as well. So uh, they, they are using, for some of them, uh, talent solutions and different models uh, to, to make sure that it's, um, uh, they, they can value uh, globalize their data. 
I think that uh, I stop here. Uh, if you have some questions, uh, feel free to come and stop at uh, Talent Booth. Uh, we have plenty of demonstrations of uh, use cases as well, and lots of stories that we can talk to, uh, to you uh, around not only digital farming, but other kind of uh, scenarios. Thank you. For, even if you are not farmer, you can you, you can you can ask some questions. So our, our booth is just over the corner, so don't hesitate. Thank you. Thank you.